This is Mark. Hi. Uh, uh, hello, Mark. Um, Can you guys see um, me yet? Um, yes. Oh, there you uh, are. Okay. Great. Thank you. Cool. Okay, hello. Hello. My name is Alison Camacho. This is my partner, Ismael Rosario. Hi. And we're doing a podcast um, about the Flat Earth Theory. And we really want kids to know about it and like be more open to the idea. So, okay, what exactly is the Flat Earth Theory to you? The Flat Earth Theory is the belief that you are not living on a tiny spinning ball going through space at impossible speeds and impossible areas. That you are living inside a building, that a structure with four walls and a floor and a ceiling, and that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And that would be the Soviet Union and the United States. And when they did, they decided to keep it under wraps for as long as possible, and which leads us to about five years ago when social media and all the smartphones made what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, um, you know how all of, yeah, you know how all of the pictures that um, NASA has been giving us has been shown that the Earth is flat, especially how, um, astronauts have gone into space and claimed the earth is round right what are your thoughts on that uh first just so you know uh, no one in our group uses the word round we always use the word sphere or globe or ball because technically a dinner plate can be round your dining room table could be round uh, okay. but as far as the the nasa photos yeah it's it's all fabricated it's all movie it's all hollywood uh oh. and and, and I, one of the things I like to throw out is, at people is, you know, it's not like NASA invented the globe. It's not, you know, because the first photo ever taken of the globe was in 1972 by Apollo 17. So how did everybody know in the 1960s, for example, that the Earth was a globe? How how'd you know? There was no there was no space program until 1958. So how did everybody know in, in the world? know? it's not that they knew it's because they were told they were told this for generation after generation going all the way back to the 1500s. So yeah. yeah, no, no. Every everything you see from any space organization is absolutely fake. Civilians don't have access to it. It's all military. Yeah. Um. Why would you think NASA or the government, the same thing, would want the people to think that the Earth is a in a spherical shape? Well, it's not just NASA. Just so you know, um, and NASA was just a kind of a byproduct pro byproduct of the entire thing. So, if the best, if our best and brightest didn't figure it out until the mid nineteen fifties, pushing nineteen sixty, would you tell the general public? Let's say you know, uh, you I know I can't necessarily put on you. You know, what would you do back in the day? Because you're you're super super young. But would you tell anybody right now? Yeah, probably right now. But in 1960, no, you couldn't tell anybody that the world was a globe because the shock waves to the system would be too much. We'd already built the infrastructure for everything. You're talking about, um, you know, academically would be just chaos. All so many um, sciences, you know, um, geography, bio, biology, geology. Everything would have to be rebuilt from the ground up. Economically, world markets would have to be suspended for months to figure out what it would mean. And um, the big one, of course, is religious. You're talking about the five major, major religious houses of this world, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. They would all have leverage against science. And you're talking about potential chaos. So, no, it's, it's an easy decision to make. Don't tell anybody until you can figure out a way to introduce it to the public. And that's where we are right now. Social media, high-speed internet, uh, six billion smartphones. Now is the time to release it. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, recently, uh, there was, um, I guess you could say, a tragedy in the Flatter Society. Mike, Mad Mike Uggs died trying, like... Mad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through. Yeah. Uh, um, just like your opinion on that, do you think that was an effective way to try to like uh, uh, see if the Earth was flat? Well, I have mid mixed feelings about Mad Mike Hughes. Um, we were the ones that got him into it, but he was a daredevil first. So he was a stunt man long before he met us. Uh, he only got into what we were doing back in about 2017. And he asked us for money to finish his early rockets. And so, yeah, we did a crowdfunding thing and gave him $8,000 and said, put a big flatter sticker on the side and go to town, have fun. And then later, very recently, actually, uh, he got a television deal picked up by the Science Channel. And they were the ones that kind of helped him fund the, the later rocket. 
And he went off, you know, he, he fired off into the air and, and his parachute system failed and he crashed and he died. Um, it had nothing to do with the Flat Earth Society. Just, you know, even I don't have anything to do with the Flat Earth Society. We don't even use that term. But two things we don't say. We don't say uh, round and we don't say Flat Earth Society. We're, if, if we're software, uh, we're Flat Earth 2.0. We're all, we're social media based. We don't have anything to do with the old guard. But um, for me, look, Mad Mike generated a lot of headlines. So was it the best $8,000 we ever spent? Yeah, I said that when he was alive and that hasn't changed since he died because he generated massive amounts of headlines when he did it and he knew the risks and he was the one that took them. Plus, I've kind of got mixed feelings because he was suing me. Um, the, the, the lawsuit, of course, is now gone, uh, but he was suing me for the legal rights to my name because he wanted to turn people's names into corporations, which didn't make any damn sense. So I had a court appearance with him uh, last month, which I did not go to. Uh, but I won't have any more court appearances. How's that? Okay. Why do you think people like us should even think the thinking that the Earth is flat would be important? Why? Why would it be important? Okay, I'll I'll tell you why. Because science tells you by default that you're on a little ball, little rock in space that was an accident that you're just happenstance, that you came part of the Big Bang system and your life means nothing. You have no purpose. And the Flat Earth is the exact opposite of that, meaning the, the, the Flat Earth model is very small. It's more intimate. It was built deliberately for you. And you have a reason for being here. Do I know exactly what your guys' reason is? No. No, I don't. But it gets you a lot more close to your spiritual side than the globe model. That's for sure. It's a, it's a message of hope more than anything. It gives people something to look forward to. Science gives you nothing. Science is a message of despair. We are a message of hope. Okay. I think that's more questions. Okay. So how would you, uh, I know that so far you've uh, explained like the flat earth and like why it's this, but how would you convince someone like if they truly believe like, oh, the earth is round, the earth is a sphere. Uh, how would I convince them otherwise? Yeah, I would yeah. treat it. I would treat it like a court case. In that, can I prove to you right now? Can I absolutely prove to you that the Earth is flat, an enclosed system? No, I cannot. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to go is some sort of flat model. And but I can give you five, my five best bullet points. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, my five best bullet points. And if you've listened to any of my other stuff, you might have picked these up already, but I'll throw them out at you and I'll, I'll give it to you the best I can. First one mm -hmm. would be long distance photography, which is 10 years ago. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not using the space program, which I highly recommend, don't anyone use that as an example. How do you, what, what down on the ground references can you use? Well, people say, well, ships going over the horizon. You know, they, they seem to go whole first, they go off, they disappear. Obviously, they've gone over the horizon. I go, yeah, 10 years ago, yeah. I would have said that. Yes, absolutely. But then HD cameras came out and they've got really, really good. In fact, the, the Nikon P1000, I think has like 180 power zoom on it. Now the boat's gone, right? But now you can crank it up with an HD camera and it can bring it back into a frame and you let it go again and you can bring it back to frame. Well, there's a problem there because eventually that boat has to be on the other side of the hill. It has to be on the other side of the curve. And we can't find an object upwards of 100, 150 miles that we can't bring back into frame. And in fact, the only limit do we have with HD cameras is that you um is the thickness of the atmosphere itself because remember what you're breathing in now is only 99 percent transparent it's a mixture of mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen and a little bit of trace gases so that's the first one uh second one which would be gravity versus the um uh, the vacuum of space which is let's say is there a second story to your room right now is there a floor above you uh we're on the top floor okay but, no... all right let's say there's a floor above you <laughs> Um, and you turn that into a vacuum chamber and you have a cork in the ceiling, you pop it, what happens? A million times out of a million times, the air is going to equalize. It's going to be instant. It's going to be violent. You're probably going to pass out. You might even die, right? It's one thing that movies get absolutely dead wrong is that the, the equalization, you want to look it up online, look up like a vacuum versus steel rail car or vacuum versus anything. I mean, when you suck, when you use a straw and suck a soda out of a glass, you're using a vacuum, the very light vacuum that you're creating with your own body against gravity. So the question is, when you walk outside, 
why isn't our atmosphere torn off and taken, you know, taken into space? And you might just say, well, gravity, gravity's holding back on. No, 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 because no. gravity couldn't even keep the air in your room right now. It's the exact same gravity. Science cannot explain it. Science will, will I, I, the, the, the short version of this is tell me where the bleeding edge of space is. Where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Tell me where that is. No science, no scientists out there can give you an accurate number. They, they just, they just kind of gloss over it. Third one, which would be the, um, the eclipse shadow. Eclipse shadow is wrong. It's absolute. it's way, way too small. So the moon is supposedly 2000 miles wide, but the eclipse blackout zone, which go, you know, goes across the, the ground is only 70 miles wide. And that's a massive decrease in the shadow. The shadow should be huge. Shadows don't get smaller. You know, you walk by a building, your, your shadow is either your size or it gets longer, but it never, ever, ever gets tiny. And no one ever explains that. It's, it's amazing. Uh, fourth one would be the, um, uh, hang on, drew a blank for one second. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, moon temperature. Moon temperature. Uh, uh, fascinating thing. I didn't even believe it when I first saw it, which is, uh, you know, the in the sun, you have sunlight, but in the shade, it's cooler, right? So if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We all know that. In the moonlight, it's the exact opposite, which is just mind blowing. So if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's up to 60, 63 degrees in the moon shade. It's, it's warmer in the moon shade, which means the, the moon is generating a cold light. The, the moon is not reflecting anything off the sun. It's self-illuminated. It's just its own object. Um, does that prove a flat earth? No, but it absolutely blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon. Because at the very least, and go, you can go to any physicist and say, can radiation be reflected off a surface and be converted into a negative version of radiation? Where, where, where is this? That's like bouncing a flashlight beam off your wall and chilling a salad on the other side of that. It cannot, it cannot happen. Last but not least, my fifth point, which is uh, the Van Allen radiation belt trap question, which I love so much. I, I, I created this one, which is the Van Allen radiation belts designed, or I'm sorry, announced in 1959 by NASA, right? Uh, super deadly. No one can ever, ever go through them. So are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? Simple question. If you say yes, they are deadly, then how did the Americans get through them round trips from the 1960s until the 1970s? In fact, they, they, they went to the moon and back with no shielding, supposedly. You know, there's only three things that can stop radiation, gold, lead, and a whole bunch of water. None of those capsules used any of that. They only use plastic and aluminum. Cannot stop radiation. Cannot do it. And yet these things, you know, nobody died. Nobody got radiation sickness. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys alive, walking around right now. And if you say go the other way, it's like, well, they're not that deadly. I go, okay. Then you go to the NASA.gov website and you look up a little video called Orion Trial by Fire made by NASA, where they, they state in great detail how they can't test the new capsules because they haven't solved the radiation problem yet from Van Allen. And it's like, what are you talking about? You solved it perfectly in the 1960s. In fact, no one's ever, ever, ever had a problem with it. So why do you have a problem with it now? And that was it. The, those five questions usually shut down just about any scientist. I threw these at a, um, an astrophysicist out in Georgetown uh, about a year and a half ago. And that was it. He folded and the interview was over and we, you know, the, the segment never aired. It was amazing. So there you go. Those are my five, my five bullet points. Okay, and for the last question, should we trust on what the government tells us? I'm sorry, say it, say it one more time. Should we trust on what the government tells us? Is the government a relative source? Well, you got to remember when it comes to the government, I'm, I'm not going to come out and just say, no, everything the government says is a lie. Don't believe them. <laughs> you know, start, grab pitchforks and torches and just start burning everything down. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Just remember that when it comes to business or politics or entertainment or sports or journalism or even science they it still boils down to money and corporate interests look uh, you know corporations are owned by other corporations which are owned by huge conglomerates you know every media you know i don't care if it's abc nbc cbs cnn they're all owned by parent companies and these big parent companies you know like like a perfect one to be um if i'm not mistaken like nbc NBC is owned by General Electric. 
Well, Whoa. General Electric, you know, yeah, they make light bulbs, but they're also the biggest, one of the biggest military contractors in the world. They make weapon systems, missiles, <laughs> and guns, and all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah. if they don't want to bet, you know, you, you will you see any bad stories, for example, running on NBC about General Electric? No, because it's a conflict of interest. You just don't do it. Um, little things like um, Rotten Tomatoes is, you know, the, the website where you look up movie stuff, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, they're owned by Fandango now. <laughs> and, Fandang and so Fandango wants you to buy movie tickets. So you're not going to see as many brutal movie reviews because Fandango wants you to buy tickets. And it just goes on and on and on. L let's escalate that to the government real quick. When it comes to the government, they, they there's always ulterior motives. Always, always, always. Um, yeah. every, you know, they, every, every government wants to be the good guys. Nobody wants to be the bad guys. America, especially we mm -hmm. want to wear the white hats. We want to be the heroes, but unfortunately, because of our policies and what we've been doing for decades and decades and decades, you know, mm -hmm. we, we take things that we want <laughs> and we have been for a long time and yeah. we do it for what we consider is the greater good and the public get Some of the public benefits from that and other times it doesn't. But they're going to take these, make these decisions and take these chances without asking the general public, because that's what you can do when you reach certain levels of power. So can you trust the government? Uh, yes and no. Uh, what, what I try to tell people is when you're watching news stories or you're reading news stories, take everything with a grain of salt. There's an old saying, which I love so much, which is um, trust everyone, but count your change. Look at stories and understand why they are news stories. If you see a story, here, I'll give you a perfect example. I don't want to drag this out too much. But if you see a news story that says, hey, if you eat, every time you see a story that says, hey, if you eat three ounces of dark chocolate a week, you might have less chance of cancer. Well, where do you think that story came from? <laughs> the, the chocolate industry, probably. You know, it's it's good to eat eggs. It's bad to eat eggs. This is good for you. This is bad for you. And it just gets bad. You know, you know, like the one a thing I just saw recently was like McDonald's is is no 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 wait Mc, was it Wendy's is starting up a new breakfast sandwich, but McDonald's is offering free McMuffins. You know, during this week, it's like why would you run this story? <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a complete it's a complete fast food story so anyway again the, the government just just read their headlines skeptically don't just believe every single thing you see that comes out of mainstream news or the associated press because they are they are they have corporate interests that it all comes down to, to money and power and really do your own research and ask your own questions You'll be much better off for it. Just don't take anything at face value and then repeat it to somebody later, because it, it eventually, eventually you'll you'll feel better if you if you tend to to figure the stuff. I'll give you. Oh, sorry, one more thing about that. Here's a perfect example. Let's let's go to science real fast, which is when because is science infallible? Like Neil deGrasse Tyson, that science is true whether or not you believe in it, right? It's like fine. If you guys want to do go to a lab and test what the boiling temperature of water is, you can test that right now. But tell me what the core of the earth looks like. The core of the earth is a perfect example of that. The core of the earth, if you believe it, is 4,000 miles straight down from you. What does it look like? Nobody knows. What's the deepest hole ever drilled? Uh, it's not 2,000 miles, not 1,000 miles, not even 10 miles. It's 8 miles, a fraction of 1%. So why do we always see these cross sections of the earth, you know, with the yellow and orange and you know, white bands and all with these perfectly cut away? They have no idea. So why are you putting that in the textbook as absolute gospel? They don't know. And that's because science doesn't like leaving question marks in science books. They say, this is our best guess. And, but, but then if you do it long enough, they say, oh, this is absolute fact. It's like, what are you talking about? You don't even know. And then you're showing me cross sections of Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto. It's like, you haven't even been there. You haven't even claimed to been there. So how are you saying, how are you telling me all these things? So again, you know, the, look up one more thing. Sorry, I, I know I'm dragging this out a bit. Look up one more thing. This is part of my, my speech for this year, which is every time a scientist comes at you and says, no, science is right no matter what. I go, really? Then look up the freaking coelacanth fish. C O E L A C L A L A C A N T H the coelacanth fish. Uh, you can also say it in a Siri if you wanted to, and it's this pretty ugly prehistoric fish, right? Dead seventy million years, 
dead uh -huh. 70 million years every scientist in the world every single one of them would have bet their life savings that it was dead for 70 million years and then the british caught one off of south africa and then another one off of mozambique and then madagascar and pretty much they're all over the outside the outside of africa so yeah. how did science screw that up so badly from 70 million years never ever ever going to see them again to oh yeah you can go out right now and and get them national geographic has a wonderful special where they're swimming around with them so how did they screw yeah. they they screwed it up because they never bothered to research their own their, their base findings meaning they said well here's the fossil record it matches up this dinosaur period therefore it has to be dead no one ever checked it no one ever ever checked it in fact what kills me about that is that if if let's say they didn't discover it in 1940 Right. Let's say it waited until like 2015. The science community would just would, would accuse us to be like, oh, it's photoshopped. That's not real. It's fake. It's fake. It's like, no, it's absolutely real. So anyway, it just science is only true until the day it's is, in, until the day it isn't. You know, they, they put the stamp on it. We are absolutely 100 percent sure. And then they're wrong. And then they have to readjust. it. It's like, OK, we're 100 percent sure about that. I've had people come back at me and say that. Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, well, the seal can't fish where we screwed up on. We, we know we screwed up on that. It's like, oh, okay. I go, but you're absolutely sure about the world. It's like, well, yeah, we're sure 100%. You know, you said that about the fish, too. And they're like, yeah, but we're sure about the world. It's like, yeah, are you? Are you? Have you been up there? Because the military would never lie ever, ever in a million years. All right. Sorry. That's my ramble. Okay. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Was that it? That's all you had? Yeah, that, that's all. It's because we have to keep a time frame we don't okay all right but well thanks thank you for your time thanks thank guys you. if you need anything else let me know all right bye bye, bye, -bye.